All right, so let's talk about BJT as a switch. So I built a circuit here, just turning a light on and off, and uh, we'll study uh, the current going into the base and the current through the collector and the voltage drop across the base and the emitter. We'll also study the voltage drop across the collector and the emitter to see if they're all in alignment and we'll see if this thing is in saturation or not or if the BJT is on or off. So we're doing lab 10. Um, so I mean you guys have already got that. So we've changed it up a little bit, um, added some questions for you guys to do so that you can do this online. But I'm going to do the measurements for you. Okay, let's get into it. So essentially I've got a BJT as a switch going on here. I'm turning this LED on, it's a pretty powerful LED, um, and what I'm doing, I'll just turn it on. So here we go. I'm connecting my base resistor, and the light comes on. Okay, that's cool. So now that it's the circuit's actually working, I've got some things going on here. Um, I've got this guy to generate my square wave. Uh, and this guy to study it, but we'll take a look at that after. For now, let's actually just take a look at what's going on. So right now, I've got this guy connected across my CE. So I will show you that over here. This is the circuit that I've got connected up here. So my CE, let me get something to point with, here we go. So my CE is from here, because that's my collector and that's my emitter there. So this voltage should be around 0.2 volts. And we'll see that it is actually. That should be around 0.2 volts. Now this guy being a PN junction should be 0.7 volts and we'll see what that voltage is. Okay, cool. So the current going through here is uh, 16, 18 milliamps or so. Um, so I'm measuring that. That's the current going through there. So this guy, this LED and these two resistors that I have in series are actually drawing the current through there. That current's going through the collector and then out the emitter. So this guy is on. What we want to know is, it, is it saturated? Is it fully on? Well, we'll study that. And um, we can look at the biasing and the voltages here and we'll see if they are what they're supposed to be and then it's in saturation mode. Um, here we go. So now I've got uh, my current going through here and we'll measure what the current going through there is. Actually, I have a different BJT than you guys do. So um, what I did was I put a 30 kilo ohm in here. Uh, it doesn't matter. So we'll just roll with that. There's a 30 kilo ohm there, although yours is a 1K. So um, let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, good. So I've got this going on. Now let's actually take a look at the current going through here. Sorry, I've got the current, it's already there. What I wanna do is actually, I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna measure my base collect, my base emitter junction to see if it's around 0.7 volts. If it is, and this is 0.2, which it is, by the way, if you take a look at it, it's right there. So it says 0.21 volts, and that's my CE voltage. Okay, so I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to put him over here and I'm going to put this and connect this to my base to see what my voltage drop is across. So now that is connected right here. It was before it was connected there and now it's connected there. So my ground is in the same spot and now I'm looking at the voltage drop across here and it's 0.726 volts. Okay. So about where we're supposed to be. So if we were to look at this, we could say that that junction is forward bias. Because I've got 0.7 volts here and I've got zero volts here. I've got this junction here, which is between here and there is 0.2 volts. And between here and here is seven. So the voltage potential between here, that's 0.7, and the voltage there, sorry, the voltage potential there is 0.2, and the voltage potential there is 0.7, or a little bit more than 0.7, so that is actually forward biased. So what's going on here, because that's more positive than that, that's forward biased, and that's forward biased, that thing is in saturation, or it's specifically closed, okay? So as far as these numbers go, that guy was, point two, was uh, 0.21. Uh, this guy is uh, 0.726. So my BE is 0.726. Is the light on? Well, yeah, it's on. And over here, the BJT, is it on or off? Well, it's on. Because what's going on is that it is in saturation. Because both the this guy, like back here, that junction there, that NP junction is forward biased. This PN junction is forward bias. That means it's fully saturated. Cool. So with that said and done, um, yeah, the BJT is on for sure. And is the is the BE is the 
VBE greater than 0.5 volts? It is, it's a 0.7, so it is definitely. Okay, is VCE between this and that? It is, it's just a little bit more because it's 0.21. But yes, it is, it is that way. And then you can calculate VBC, which is going to be the voltage here, and that will tell you if it's forward or reverse bias, and you will end up saying that it is actually reverse bias. Cool. So, is VBC greater than 0.4 volts? Let's take a look at this. VC, VBC, if it's greater than 0.4 volts, Yes or no, that'll tell you if it's forward bias or not. So if it's greater than 0.4 volts, it's forward bias. If it's less than 0.4 volts, it's reverse bias. Okay, good. So uh, let's continue on here. Uh, BJT operation mode, well, what is it? Is it cut off, saturation, or active? So go to that chart, I mean, it's saturated, but why? Go to that chart in the PowerPoint and um, look through that. Well, the reason that it's saturated is because essentially this junction here, this, this NP junction is forward bias, and that PN junction is also forward bias, so it's saturated. If they weren't, it wouldn't be, and that would be an active mode, and we'll talk about that in the next lab. Okay, so let's continue. We got all that. That's fine and dandy and good. Um, the second part of this lab is pretty cool, and what's going on is that I want to generate this, and we got to talk about this, because this is actually really cool. So I've got my square wave here. I'm going to put this onto a square wave, and I'm going to kick this down to 5 hertz. Okay, good. I'm at 5 hertz. Now, nice square wave. So that's what's going on. I've got AC square wave. But you know what? If I want to take this value and stick it into here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drive my base with that square value. See? I get a square wave coming in here. So essentially, I'm going to be turning it on and off and on and off. But you know what? It doesn't like AC. I don't want to give it AC. I have to give it only DC. So really, but this thing's generating AC. We know that. Ha, watch this. You'll love this. I have the ability to do offset. So I'm going to pull this out and look what happens here. Watch this. Ready? Oh, what's happening? Look at that. That's so cool. So I'm actually picking it up. I am doing DC offset. So I'm including some DC onto my AC signal. But the reason I'm doing that is to simulate what I would get from a Raspberry Pi or from an Arduino. So I've got something here. Let's take a look. So Arduinos are really cool. Microprocessor are awesome. They're really cool things. So um, yeah, Arduinos and Raspberry Pis are really cool things. Yeah, get some of these. You'll need these for uh, micro-based automation anyway. So get yourself um, some of these guys. Actually, I've got a bunch of microprocessors and controllers and stuff in here. But these guys can put out square wave just like this. <clears throat> and uh, I got a Raspberry Pi here. I just pull it out of the package here. But anyway, this is a Raspberry Pi. It's really cool. So Raspberry Pis are a step up from an Arduino. Actually, I've got one right here. So that's a step up from an Arduino. Arduinos are pretty cool. They're pretty smart. You can do a lot of stuff with them. Raspberry Pis, um, they're more like a computer. And anyway, we won't get into that. But these, both of these things are really cool. And they can put a pulse DC, just like we're seeing here on the oscilloscope. So I've got my function generator, it's giving me 5 hertz signal. What I've done is my amplitude and my offset are set in such a way that I'm getting pulsed DC. Now watch this, I'm actually going to turn my offset off. Offset is actually including DC. So I'm taking my AC, which is this, okay? I'll put it back to a form that you're maybe more familiar with, right? So I have my nice AC waveform, and it's my sinusoidal wave. I can actually make that a square wave, which is pretty cool. And now my square wave, but it's AC. Like, this thing does not like AC. You cannot put an AC signal into here. Although, it says that there's an AC signal going in here. So what do we do? Well, we have an AC signal with offset. And when I include my offset, I'm just adding DC and it picks it up. So, now I've got this pulsing DC. And what I'm going to do, as opposed to running my DC directly from here, running it down, I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to stick my pulsing DC on. And there you go, I've got 5 hertz. So I can change the frequency, let's go to 100. Oh, I can't see that. Let's actually see what we can do is push it. Like I remember with that other lab, I could see like barely see 40. Uh, there you go, maybe, I don't know if you can see that, but I can see that flashing just kind of a bit. So my, my eyes can handle maybe 50 or, after up to 50 or 60, I can't see flashing anymore. So um, that's cool. So that's flashing and what's going on 
is that I'm taking this guy and I'm simulating what I would get from my Raspberry Pi or my Adreno. So with these guys, you can change the timing of this. You can make this flash at whatever rate you want. They can go pretty quick, but you can't change the output. It's always five volts. In this case over here, I can actually change the output. So I can actually dial this down and uh, lower my voltage out. And what's I, what that's doing is it's kind of messing with my circuit a bit and it's not actually gonna work properly. But anyway, um, you can't control the output of that directly. You can, but you can't, and you'll learn that later. So <clears throat> that's the second half of this lab. Um, and really it's just, it's, its purpose is to kind of simulate the pulsing of this thing and then you get an idea of what's going on there. So I think I'm gonna go now and get my phone. Uh, I think we're good. Okay, bye.